The reason people always end up running away is because of fear of failure, but what if they were able to see the probability of success in everything they do? Then they would take more risks to make drastic changes in their lives. This is the story of Bai Wu, author of the masterpiece Raise the Slime starting from today. However, he is not having a good time. As his landlord kicked him out and changed the locks, he can't even pay the rent. So now he will be forced to sleep on the streets, his most recent book was a flop. So it looks like he won't get paid soon, how long will he be able to keep it up? He will probably have to wash dishes for a living from now on. Being as he is, he decides to try his luck in the lottery. Upon entering, he asks for five tickets, but to his surprise, the moment he sees them he realizes that each one has a percentage. Bai Wu thinks it's because he worked too hard the night before and is hallucinating. Everything indicated that he was the only one who could see those numbers, but he still decides to give it a try. Surprisingly, he wins with the first ticket, which gives him the confidence to buy another pair. Bai Wu begins to suspect that the numbers on the tickets are his success rates, so he buys even more. He has 9 with 100% probability and 1 with 0%, so he decides to try the 1 with 0 to clear his doubts. This clears it up a bit more, since as the number indicated, he didn't manage to win anything from that ticket. So yes, he is able to see the success percentages accurately. The shop owner tells him that gambling is never a good thing, so he should control himself, but Bai Wu ignores what he says and buys many more tickets. The shop owner thinks he is just wasting his money. But 10 minutes later, Bai Wu managed to win $20,000. The shop owner wondered what kind of luck that was. Bai Wu analyzes his new skill. The numbers represent the success rate of the lottery, but the amount to be won is unknown. It would be great if he could see the amounts, such as the chance of winning $100 or another amount. And before you say anything, yes, the amounts are in yuan, but here we will use dollars. Next, Bai Wu asks for some more tickets, the shop owner tells him to stop, as his luck must run out at some point. But Bai Wu's smile says the opposite, in fact, he feels quite lucky, and if he doesn't win, which he clearly will, he can see success rates, so it would be like donations to charity. The shop owner starts to get angry with his luck and can't wait for him to stop winning. But Bai Wu keeps winning, six wins in a row, the shop owner couldn't understand how he could be so lucky. Moments later, Bai Wu realizes that the odds are displayed based on his questions, so if he rephrases the questions correctly and uses the odds well he can completely fool the shop owner and change his until a few moments ago not very bright fate. The shopkeeper is sure that Bai Wu's luck won't last forever and tells him that his life is bad. But well, it's not anymore, with his new power he is able to do many things. Bai Wu buys 20 more tickets, the man in the shop warns him not to get carried away by his luck and become an addict. But that's fine with Bai Wu, he's already won $20,000. The next ticket Bai Wu picks up is an empty one, the shop owner celebrates, but this was all part of Bai Wu's plan, he keeps getting empty tickets. The shop owner boasts that he was always right and that Bai Wu used all his luck before and that is why he is now unlucky. Bai Wu bought a ticket with a 30,000% chance, the shop owner believes that Bai Wu is relying on his luck, but in reality he is relying on his new powers. A few moments ago, Bai Wu bought the tickets with a 1% chance, of course on purpose so as not to raise suspicions about his powers. The shop owner tells him that he will give him back $100 as it seems that his luck is now 1 in 10. But Bai Wu starts to act up and thanks him for his kindness, only to turn things around. Because he opens the other ticket, the owner gets scared as he thought that Bai Wu had won $10,000, but it was only 10. However, he kept winning again and again, the shop owner starts to believe that Bai Wu is a monster. Bai Wu keeps acting as if he has no power to see the odds and prays for a big win. The owner is confident as he believes that no matter how lucky he is, according to him he can't win many more dollars, but Bai Wu won 15000 while receiving his money he tells the shop owner to repeat what he said about his luck before. Suddenly the owner realizes that the chances of winning are already agreed from the factory and yet Bai Wu won many times, so the remaining chance of winning will go down. So he rubs his hands together and wants Bai Wu to keep playing and nothing will happen to his business. Bai Wu looks at the remaining lottery on the shelves and the odds are very low, so he finally decides it's time to stop. The chances of winning have gone from 30% to 5%. The shop owner insists that he keep playing, as he had won a considerable amount of money. Bai Wu tells him that he doesn't want to lose any more, as even if he loses little it is still money and he should be more diligent and thrifty. Bai Wu is satisfied with what he managed to get. Now he wonders if his powers can be used for other things besides the lottery, so before leaving, 
He wonders what are the chances of him opening that door. They start at 100% and this is the proof that his powers can be applied to other things. But that percentage suddenly starts to drop, so for safety he moves away from the door. And it is moments later, a very energetic husky breaks through the glass. Bai Wu manages to dodge the dog and continues on his way. But the shop owner becomes suspicious of his powers because he moved away from the door earlier, when he could simply see the dog coming from a distance. The shop owner is suspicious, and Bai Wu's suspicious behavior doesn't help at all. Bai Wu wonders what the success rate is of fooling the shop owner by telling him that he is a fortune teller. The probability is 50%. So he next wonders the success rate of telling him that he is a fortune teller who has been in his ancestral lineage. The rate is 64%, barely enough to fool him. Bai Wu tells him that he is a fortune teller, but not to compare him to just anyone, as he is from a lineage of Zhuo dynasty fortune tellers that have been around for 3,000 years. The owner doesn't believe that at all as he believes in science and not in ghosts. Besides, if Bai Wu belonged to that family they would be very famous and he has never heard of them. Bai Wu continues with his lie and tells him that it is something that has been in his family since ancient times. He also adds that they were not part of the dynasty changes, so that's why they don't have much reputation. This guy not only has the ability to see the success rate, also the ability to invent stories. After he told him that, the percentage started to go up, so he continues, he tells the owner that he has in fact already seen those powers he is talking about, pointing to the lottery tickets. This makes the percentage go up to 80%. Bai Wu continues and tells him that he realized his fortune and won the lottery, but decided to stop because the heavens turned against him. The times he didn't win were a sign of this. At this point, the shop owner was already convinced that Bai Wu was a fortune teller. Bai Wu also adds that he had a bad feeling when he went out, so he saw his fortune quickly and realized that he could be killed and so he backed off. The shop owner now calls him master and wants to pay him for his services, as he wants him to guess something. Bai Wu smiles as it is a good chance to test his skills. He tells him that there is no need to pay, as his skills go hand in hand with karma, so he asks him what he wants him to guess. The shop owner wants to know his financial future as his house is being demolished and wants to know what is the maximum amount of compensation he can receive. Bai Wu asks him the ideal price, he tells him that taking into account the dimensions of the house, it would be about $10,000 per meter. Bai Wu asks what the odds are that the old man will receive a compensation of 2 million. It is 100%. So this time he asks for a compensation of 3 million. Same result. 4 million. Also, same result, so he tries 5 million. There the probability drops to 10%, so he opts for just over 4 million and that is the answer he gives to the shop owner. 4 million is a lot of money, so the shop owner asks him if his calculations are correct. Bai Wu tells him that if he doesn't believe him he can call right now. The shop owner calls and a minute later, they did indeed agree to give him that amount of money, so he thanks Bai Wu, as compensation, he wants to give him $300,000, Bai Wu hit the jackpot, of course he will accept that amount. Bai Wu feels he cracked the code of life, then he leaves the shop. Everything is going well for him now, as long as he keeps using that gold mine properly, he can climb to the top of the world. On his way out, the husky from before was still there, so he uses his powers to find out if anyone had lost it. The answer was yes, so since technically thanks to the dog he won $300,000, he will help him get its owner. This husky is excessively energetic, very attached to real life if you ask me. Bai Wu wonders what kind of torment the owner of that animal must go through every day. The dog starts to run, so Bai Wu follows him. A few minutes later he arrives at the Central Park, where he finds this pretty girl. Bai Wu wonders about the odds of that girl being the owner of the dog, it is 100%. Bai Wu is excited as he didn't expect the owner to be such a pretty girl. He just wanted to make some money with the shop owner by proving his skills, he didn't expect to have a chance to talk to a beauty. The girl is quite relaxed, she is able to take selfies even if she lost her dog. The girl turns around and looks at Bai Wu and the husky and says that she has a similar one called Oreo. This girl doesn't seem to be the smartest, she doesn't realize that this dog is hers. The girl still doesn't realize and says that the dog's bark is similar to hers, as is the color, the girl is really dumb. Bai Wu tells her that that is actually her dog, she thinks it is a joke, as her pet Oreo is supposed to be tied to the bench. The girl finally realizes, five minutes later, Bai Wu adds her to her contacts. It's the first time Bai Wu has had such a pretty girl in her contacts. So she is happy she made the decision to follow the dog, as for that pet, it's pretty wild. From the pictures she deduces that he has the whole house in pieces, if it was Bai Wu. He would have been chased by the landlord by now, but she is in no position to criticize, as the lock of her room was replaced and right now she has nowhere to go. Before he leaves he tells him that he should stop renting a house and get a house of his own. Bai Wu is enlightened as with his probability skill he no longer has to worry about paying rent. Now it is easier for him to buy a house once he becomes rich. 
But how would he become rich and buy a house? He doesn't have enough money for now, that $300,000 is not enough, so he must think of a quick way to make money, and the answer is, antique collections. Bai Wu goes to a fair where they sell antiques. From Han Dynasty Jade to Tang and Song Dynasty calligraphy, the market was packed with people selling their wares, but Bai Wu knows that these people are looking at him as a novice, and will want to take advantage of him to rip him off. This guy offers him antiques inherited from his ancestors. His surname is Lai and the ancestor was someone famous called the same. Bai Wu pretends to be innocent, but what they don't realize is that this rookie over there has golden fingers. The odds of getting a successful deal are 100%. That means what the guy is selling is real, but something doesn't feel right about it. Bai Wu's knowledge of antiques must be wrong. He doesn't know if those things have real value or not, so he must limit the success rate. So he asks what the odds are of getting something valued over $10,000. It's 0%. It's also 0% with something worth 5000 Bai Wu asks him about the price of these things, the guy tells him he has a good eye as that's the most valuable antique item. But it turns out to be rubbish, because it's not the real price and the guy wants to rip him off, so he leaves even though the guy offers him a discount. The place is full of scammers, so he can't put the value of the antiques that low, so he'll leave 10,000 as the lower limit. When passing this seller, he asks what are the chances of buying something valued at 10,000. They are 10%, so he gradually increases the price and the rate remains the same. The odds of finding something valued at 50,000 are also 10%. Bai Wu hit on a good deal. As for the guy, he plans to take advantage of Bai Wu for being a beginner. He offers him some antiques but Bai Wu stops him, as he wants that specific one, with 100% chance of being worth 500,000. Bai Wu may not be good with antiques, but with his probability skill he can find many and become a top antique collector in the future, it is the beginning of his legend. The guy thinks Bai Wu is very naive. Since something looks old doesn't necessarily indicate it's an antique, out of 9 bronzes 10 are fake. So he thinks of how to raise the price of that junk, Bai Wu knows the guy is trying to take the opportunity to raise the price. But he should be careful with his expressions, since he has become overconfident since he got his powers. The guy asks Bai Wu to look at that porcelain vase. As collecting antiques requires affinity and good eye, he tells him that that vase is very good. It is polished, shiny, all for the price of 50,000. He also adds that once he resells it, he is likely to make a fortune. Bai Wu wonders why he doesn't give him the price of the object he chose. So he suspects he doesn't know he has an object worth at least 500,000. Bai Wu tells him that he is aware that collecting requires affinity, but he doesn't want to take the vase. He insists on taking the bronze cup. The guy tells her that he got that cup in his hometown, the price is 8,000, no more, no less. Bai Wu gets excited because he would be buying a cup worth 500,000 for only 8,000. He confirms his theory by asking the probability that he knows the real price. With the skill of probability, any attempt to hide one's thoughts is futile. Bai Wu plans to cut the price by pretending to be a poor rookie. He then asks for the probability of being able to buy the cup at 2,000, and seeing that it was 100%, he tries 2,000 and 1,000. As the odds were all high, he decides not to be so greedy and proposes to the subject to buy it for 2,000. The guy hesitates a little, because even if it is only 2,000, it is not easy to sell it. Bai Wu tells him that if he does not want to sell it then forget it. This makes the guy has no choice but to accept the 2000. The guy spent 8000 on two items, the other one was sold to a girl the day before. Successful transaction. Bai Wu manages to buy the cup at only 2000, he made quite a fortune, although the shop owner mistakenly thinks the same. Later, he brags that he sold an item he only bought for a few dollars for 8000. He thinks he sold a pile of junk for the price of a real antique. The girl who bought from him the day before spent 9,000 on a jar of wine. And speaking of that girl, he was going to his stall again. When she gets there, the guy tells her there are no refunds, but she's not there for that. She actually went to buy the brass cups. She asks the guy where that cup is, as she would pay up to 50,000 for them. That's where she realizes that the business with Bai Wu didn't work out as profitable as she thought. The girl tells him that if the price he gave him is not enough, he can give even more, 60, 70, 80, every increase she made was a blow to the guy's incredulous face. The swindler was swindled. The guy gives her the price of 100,000. When the girl agrees, the guy falls backwards because he didn't expect her to agree to pay so much. The guy next door tells the girl that the cup she is looking for has already been sold, and for a price of 2,000. The guy tells the girl that he will get the cup back, then he notices that nearby there were people gathered. They all happened to be watching as an old man offered $300,000 to Bai Wu for the bronze cup. The girl gets angry with Bai Wu while he was still negotiating with the old man. He had rejected the offer of 300000 every time he offered more for the bronze cup. The seller was more affected. The old man tells Bai Wu that the most he will offer is 400000 
Bai Wu knows that the old man is an expert, so he would like to be his friend, so he tells him that he can sell the cups to him for 500,000. The old man, even though he had said a few moments ago that he would not pay more, decides not only to be Bai Wu's friend, but to accept the deal. People already know that Bai Wu bought that cup in that place, so they feel sorry for the person who sold it to him at such a low price, as they don't know it was this guy, they ask him why he has a long face. He, in order not to admit that he just lost a lot of money, says that he has been doing this for too long to sell something so valuable for such a low price. The girl enters the scene and offers Bai Wu 550,000. Upon seeing her, Bai Wu likes her because she's quite pretty, but I'm going to have to be told why he said this little girl. Just by looking at her, he knows she's the type of rich senior girl. Bai Wu is aware that now with his powers, getting pretty girls will be very easy. The girl thinks that Bai Wu is disgusting by the way he looks at her. She also adds that if she is there wanting to buy that antique, it is because of her grandfather, otherwise she wouldn't be there wasting her time. Bai Wu already knows that she also has a 100% chance of buying the cup, so she thinks about raising the price. Bai Wu says hello to the guy in the shop who sold him the object giving him away to everyone and making him look like the jerk who sold a valuable object at a very low price. Immediately, the girl and the grandfather start arguing over who buys the cup. Seeing the girl's attitude, the old man sounds off to the old man. Bai Wu tells them both to talk it over and decide who will buy it. The girl knows that somehow Bai Wu wants to raise the price, she and the old man start to bid more. But when the old man is about to outbid her, he asks her if she knows old Kajer, and sure enough, Kajer is this girl's grandfather. The old man knows him too, they are friends, so he already knows that she is there to buy the drink from her grandfather. The old man's name is Lai Waiguo, a university history professor, just like the Kajer. Bai Wu asks them if they will buy the object or not. The girl after talking to Waiguo, manages to convince him so that she can buy the cup. Moments later, the girl pays Bai Wu 600,000. She managed to get 300 times the price at which she bought the cup, so why should she bother making novels when she now has anime protagonist powers? Bai Wu asks the girl for her contact under the pretense that when he has more antiques to sell, he will call her. Bai Wu tries to talk more with the girl, she tells him to stop acting like he is older than her. Bai Wu asks about the likelihood of this girl being older than him, it is 0%. Bai Wu thinks that a woman proud of herself is worthy of being his wife, and having the ability to see the success rate, he can show her how good he is. He uses his powers to find out the girl's age, she is 20, just like him. Bai Wu was born on September 30th, so he tries to find out what month the girl was born in. As she was not born in the next three months, she must be younger than him. And sure enough, she was born on the same day as Bai Wu. Next, Bai Wu starts using his powers to find out the exact time and date the girl was born, only to find out that the girl was born only a minute after he was. So he knows she wants to act like an older sister and belittle him. He can't wait to frustrate her. The girl is about to leave but Bai Wu tries to stop her. Next. He tells her age and the approximate date of her birthday, she is surprised. Bai Wu tells her that everything is calculated, but she doesn't take him seriously. So Bai Wu gives her more exact details. The people around were surprised because they thought Bai Wu was a fortune teller. This was further supported after they saw the girl's surprised face. But not everyone thought so. One of them thought that Bai Wu had been collecting information from the girl to harass her and looked like a pervert. The girl planned to go on her way but Bai Wu made a bigger move and told her the exact time of the day she was born, seconds included because of that. She calls her mother to ask her about the exact time she was born, after she saw the birth certificate. Three minutes later her mother confirms what Bai Wu had said. However, the girl refuses to accept it and waste her time with Bai Wu. He approaches her and tells her that it was just a coincidence, but she thinks he is treating her like a fool, as he even said the exact seconds of the day she was born. Bai Wu liked to see her angry, then reveals that he did the calculation, then tells her that not all fortune tellers are liars, then tells her the color of underwear she is wearing that day. Bai Wu realizes that she hasn't talked about her boyfriend, so she uses her powers to realize that not only does she not have a boyfriend, but that she is a girl who hates men and has never fallen in love with one. Even Bai Wu is surprised by this. The girl is embarrassed and takes Bai Wu with her away from the crowd to ask him how exactly he knows so much about her. Bai Wu tells her that he just lifted his finger and counted. She doesn't believe him, but Bai Wu even tells her that he knows she has three moles on her body. By the way, the girl's name is Dai Kinking. Bai Wu manages to get King's contact. Before leaving, he makes it clear to her that if she needs to buy any other antique or if she wants any divination she is free to seek him out. The ability success rate is too much, you can even know people's secrets, but he didn't expect that he would come across such a pretty girl and use his powers to see through her. Bai Wu realizes that the old Wai Go overheard him talking on the phone, so he suspects that he contacts King's grandfather to tell him the secret she was keeping. 
Baiwu uses her powers to corroborate this, but the probability rate constantly changes. After a moment she realizes that the reason this is happening is because of her interaction with King. Moments later, Bai Wu contacts King to tell him that for the 600,000 he will give him another divination. For King's secret cannot be hidden from his family, and in fact, everything indicated that it had already been discovered. King panics and tries to find Bai Wu again. Bai Wu comments that King's parents should contact her in an hour and a half, more specifically in less than five minutes, and gives this information to King so that she is not caught off guard. Sure enough, moments later King's parents call her. She has to explain herself well and it is likely that her parents do not understand her. While Bai Wu is babbling, she receives a sudden call from her mother, this to tell her that she has arranged a blind date for her. Bai Wu at first refuses but ends up attending. He ends up going on an early date to look like a polite gentleman. This is the girl he's going on the date with, although it's not so blind if he already has pictures of her. Next, he notices that the girl is there, but she is not alone. King was following her. The probability that the two of them knew each other was 100%. The two seem to be arguing. King even ends up crying, pointing a murderous glare at Bai Wu. The other girl introduces herself to Bai Wu. Her name is Mu Yur and she thinks Bai Wu is a very good man and gets to the point, she wants them to be together. This shocks not only Bai Wu, but everyone in the restaurant. King was still in tears, Bai Wu didn't know what to do and because of that, Mu thinks he is upset with her. Bai Wu tries to clear things up. Mu approaches him and tells him that she is serious. She then hugs him and wants to get even closer to him. Bai Wu had no idea what this woman was trying to do. Shortly after Mu ends up kissing him, all this in front of King, who was frozen. Mu tells Bai Wu that it's time to go, where to? Well, home to meet her parents. King fled the place. Bai Wu knows that despite everything that happened, Mu didn't look happy at all, so she uses her powers to realize that she's using him as a shield to make King give up. He's not going to deny that he didn't enjoy the kiss, but he doesn't feel good after that. Mu meant it, she really will make Bai Wu meet her parents. The probability of this is 100%, so Bai Wu deduces that she's not just using him as a shield. She's seriously looking for a boyfriend, so she most likely just wants to get a boyfriend to make her parents happy, and indeed, she does. Bai Wu tries to talk to her. Mu acts arrogant saying that he was the one who took advantage and now he wants to repent. But he doesn't, Bai Wu doesn't repent, it's just that he hasn't even said yes yet. What is Mu Yur thinking? Later, the two finally arrive at Mu's parents' house, where Bai Wu is introduced as Mu's boyfriend. The reason he is there is because he was too soft, now he must act with her, after all he ended up saving the beauty's skin. Mu's mother tells him that if she had a boyfriend she should have told him earlier, then Bai Wu listens to Mu's father and sounds like he is carrying a knife. Mu tells both of them that they had a relationship since they were in high school, but they broke up due to studies, however, they unexpectedly got back together. Bai Wu is taken by the arm, as they would cook for him very well, however, they will leave the two of them alone first. After Mu's father leaves the room, he wonders if she really is the biological daughter of those two, and yes, 100%. The mother wants to go into the room to bring them fruit, but the father insists that they be left alone while they cook a delicious meal. Mu tells Bai Wu that this is the first time her parents have seen her with a boyfriend, that's why they are so excited. Mu's parents are trying to hear everything behind the door, so they have to keep quiet. The father has a plan in case things get messy, the knife thing if it was true. Bai Wu was confused and ended up involved in this situation, so he wants to set the record straight with Mu. He tries to approach her, but not to touch her, don't misunderstand, he just wants to talk. Mu tells him that they need some time to adjust to this relationship. Bai Wu tells her that they should stay away then, but she insists that she can adjust. A 360 degree turn, Bai Wu thinks it would be great if she were his real girlfriend. Bai Wu uses his powers to find out the probability that she will be upset if he holds her hand, then hug her and also kiss her. Bai Wu is surprised as the probability of all three is above 50%, but he tries to come to his senses. She just wants to look for a fake boyfriend to please her parents. Bai Wu is young bachelor who can't do impurities like he thought before. Bai Wu tries to take Mu's hand but she slips, because of that noise, the father becomes alert and enters the room. It was just a misunderstanding, the mother takes the master by the ears. Bai Wu is scared because he didn't do anything and yet he came into the room with a knife, then realizes it's because the father doesn't believe he is Mu's boyfriend. The parents talk about what happened, he doesn't want anyone to take advantage of his daughter and ruin her. Pretending to be a boyfriend is quite dangerous, analyzing everything well, what happens there is a family matter, Bai Wu doesn't want to play that role anymore. Bai Wu confronts Mu and tells her that they should discuss things again. As it's not too late, she tells her that she can't be acting to hide the truth from her parents forever, she also makes it clear that she doesn't want to act with her. 
then tells her that the only way to solve this problem is to communicate frankly with her parents. Mu reacts to his words and asks Bai Wu to help her do it, at least just this once. Outside, the parents heard sounds like they were arguing. The mother says that since the father scared them with a knife they will end their relationship, so they should think of a way to stop that from happening. Bai Wu leaves the room and goes straight to the door to leave. She can't stay anymore because he is not helping her, on the contrary, he is hurting her. But when she is about to put on her shoes she realizes that they are wet because Wu's mother accidentally did it. Mu asks her mother how she ended up getting Bai Wu's shoes wet, as it is uncomfortable to walk with her shoes like that. The mother proposes Bai Wu to stay there that night. Bai Wu has already made things clear with Mu, now it's up to her. Bai Wu pulls out the most exaggerated and least credible excuse to make it clear that she can't stay there for the night, so then she leaves. Mu dismisses him with a smile. The next day, Bai Wu goes to the fair from earlier. The guy from before is still upset because he was ripped off by Bai Wu, and not only lost money, he was also embarrassed. To his surprise, Bai Wu visits him again. Bai Wu asks him if he has gone to the camp to collect good artifacts. The guy thinks it is a coincidence as he came at the right time. He was collecting artifacts all night, this time he has a lot of good stuff prepared. He shows Bai Wu a set of porcelain he supposedly spent 50,000 on. Before buying, he made sure to ask the villagers and they told him that all those things were good. He even heard that those things had been abandoned at the end of the Sui dynasty, so that porcelain probably comes from the Tang Sankai dynasty. This excites Bai Wu. The guy asks Bai Wu how much he intends to pay for that porcelain. He says 60, but then he thinks again, 60 is too little, Bai Wu will think about it to give him a reasonable price. Bai Wu asks if that set of porcelain is really from the Sankai dynasty. With only 14% he doesn't have to look anymore because he knows they are fake but then he realizes that among the 7 porcelains, one is real, so there is a genuine antique in those 7 porcelains. If that is true, they could be worth 10 million. Bai Wu asks the guy for the whole set. He thinks he fell into his trap and tells him that the price for the set is 600,000, far from what the guy might think. Bai Wu is excited to see such an affordable price, so he immediately agrees to pay him and runs off with the whole set. After she leaves, the guy comes to his senses and realizes that there could have been real products in that porcelain sea. He refuses to believe it as he bought those porcelain pieces from a hand painting shop, then tries to put on airs to forget about the fact that he most likely ended up being cheated by Bai Wu again. Next, a pink car arrives and this girl gets out to ask him where the artifacts he sold her the night before are, as she wants them back and offers him a million. Among the artifacts that this girl sold him was that porcelain set that Bai Wu had just bought. This set is very important to this girl's grandfather. The guy in the shop tells her that it's not that he doesn't want to sell it back to her, it's just that he already sold it to someone else. The girl feels lost, because she doesn't know which of these porcelains is the real one. The guy tries to calm her down by saying that even though that porcelain is her grandfather's work, it is still a fake. So he tells her that she should just apologize to her grandfather and that's it. The girl replies that the material is not fake at all. Because in that porcelain, there is a piece of Tang Sankai that has been left by her ancestors for generations. Many people want to buy it. Even someone before offered 10 million, but her grandfather didn't want to sell it. This man makes fun of the guy because yesterday he sold a bronze cup valued at 600,000 for only 2,000 and now he sold a piece of porcelain valued at 10 million for 500,000. The girl asks where the guy who bought the porcelain set went. Meanwhile, Bai Wu was meeting this old man showing him the porcelain pieces to sell to him. He is surprised as he also has such a porcelain camel in his house, it is strange to him as it is a porcelain of hundreds of years old. Moreover, just now Bai Wu told him that it was Wang who sold him the set that is the name of the guy Bai Wu has been negotiating with. That is why the old man thought that it was his granddaughter who sold him that secretly. As it is too much of a coincidence, Bai Wu uses his powers to find out if that Tang Sankai originally belongs to that old man, and the answer is yes. Bai Wu suspects that maybe that object was stolen by Fat Wang, but the chances of that are nil, it was actually the man's granddaughter who sold the object to Wang. The old man tells Bai Wu that the Tang Sankai is estimated to sell for 12 million at auction, so he offers to buy it from Bai Wu for 9 million. Bai Wu thinks 9 million is a good price, plus the old man is the original owner, so he ends up accepting the deal. The old man gives him his contact letter in case Bai Wu has any other valuable items in the future. Bai Wu leaves the place and the girl from before is running there, she realizes that if she keeps running she might fall, so she tells her to be careful not to fall. The girl tells Bai Wu to stop talking nonsense. Bai Wu uses her powers and to no one's surprise, this girl is Mr. Chi's granddaughter, the one who sold the Tang Sankai, yes, the spendthrift granddaughter. Moments later, what Bai Wu had told her happens, he ends up falling but she holds onto him as she wonders how he managed to get it right when he said he would fall. The girl tells Bai Wu to let her go, but it is she who is holding him. 
Bai Wu is about to leave but the girl stops him by telling him that he is lucky, as she is on urgent business and can't deal with him now, but she will leave her contact information to deal with him later. Although to me this is an excuse to share her contact with him. The girl's name is Chizai Xiao. Bai Wu now has a lot of money so she thinks what to do with it, a car or a house first. Next he meets Wang who asks him how much he sold the porcelain set for, Bai Wu readily replies the actual price he sold it for. Wang's reaction was too kind, he didn't look surprised. Even though he lost a large sum of money, Wang is up to something. Xiao goes to see her grandfather, but when she realizes he has the porcelain set, she plans to walk away, but he tells her to go in. She asks him why he came to visit, however he told him that he came just in time, as he has something to show him. Xiao is not only late, but her grandfather bought the porcelain back, it's quite an awkward situation. She notices that she's acting weird, and tells her that the last time he saw her like this, she sold his precious china for $10, that's when she realizes that it was her this time too. Zayo tries to run away from her grandfather while calling her grandmother to save her. She is really upset, but grandma intervenes just in time to stop him from doing anything to her. Zayo didn't expect things to happen so fast, if he had known, he would have bought it before his grandfather realized. Zayo thinks about Bai Wu and what he told him earlier, so he recognizes that his vision is good. Bai Wu gets the creeps, so he uses his powers to realize that Wang is planning to do something to him, though the system responds to him in a rather ambiguous way. Bai Wu thinks about what Wang might try to do, maybe hire someone to take over or maybe he continues to collect parts to confront him and try to trick him, 100% the second option. Bai Wu is confident, now he has the power to see the success rate, there is no way he can lose to him. Bai Wu thinks that if it wasn't for Zai Xiao's recklessness he wouldn't have made that amount of money. Selling antiques by mistake at $200 is pitiful, the world of rich people is complicated to understand, he also thinks of all the girls he has met so far, they are all weird, and now he got involved with Zai Xiao. Bai Wu comes up with a bold idea, try to guess the leaks in the antique market beforehand. Bai Wu goes to the stop, where he notices that Zai Xiao is also there, after seeing what she wrote on her nets, Bai Wu thinks she is stupid. But that's not the point, because Bai Wu realizes that something's not right with that guy over there. A thief? No, it's a pervert trying to get close to Zai Xiao, so he immediately sends him a message to warn him. Zio calls Bai Wu crow mouth, he clarifies that he just wanted to help her, but she keeps saying those derogatory words to him, so Bai Wu tells him that if he knows something will happen, he won't say anything. The guy gets closer and closer to her, Bai Wu thinks Zio doesn't know what's going on. By the time he plans to intervene, Zio hits the pervert over and over again like a pro wrestler. The girl's size is inversely proportional to her skill. Zio begins to realize that Bai Wu can see things that others cannot. Bai Wu tries to leave, as he is afraid that if she finds out that it was him who bought the Tang Sankai, she will finish him off. Bai Wu wants to get away from her as soon as possible to go and see the dealer, but the chances of that happening are nil. Desperate Bai Wu wonders what will happen this time. Bai Wu thinks he will be delayed due to a traffic jam or a traffic accident. But both options are null and void, however, he has a very bad feeling. Bai Wu wonders if there are gangsters on the bus, and the answer is yes, a gangster is setting fire, and who is also on the bus right now. Bai Wu gets desperate, so he has to rush to call the police to tell them that someone wants to set the bus on fire. If the gangster succeeds, many people will die, Bai Wu must stop this at any cost. He calls the police and is clear and direct, telling them that someone wants to set the bus on fire. The police ask for his location. Bai Wu gives the exact address and tells them that the gangster is inside the bus. The cops would send someone immediately. Bai Wu tells them to hurry, as the gangster has 8 or 9 liters of petrol with him. It is at this point that the police ask Bai Wu how he knows exactly what will happen, and they ask him for proof. The police ask him again and again for the exact evidence and how he knows all this. Bai Wu has no proof, he actually has a superpower. The police are already on their way, however, Bai Wu must identify the gangster. He notices that Zayo also got on the bus and worries that he might cause some kind of trouble. Zayo looks at Bai Wu, Bai Wu gets nervous, he just wants to find the gangster and get out of there. The police contact him to tell him that they have already spoken to their nearest officer, which means that the policeman is inside the bus as well, however, the officer doesn't know what the gangster looks like, so Bai Wu has to think of a way to identify him. The gangster should be sitting down. Bai Wu goes into the bus looking for the gangster, Zayo follows him. Nine or eight liters of petrol is not an easy thing to bring, so Bai Wu suspects that the gangster put the petrol in bottles, also that he must be carrying a backpack. Next he comes across this guy here, it's definitely him. Because of the way Bai Wu was looking at him, the guy realized that something is wrong, so he must be getting ready to move things forward. 
Bai Wu thinks about whether he should do something to lower his suspicions or hurry up and stop him. Suddenly, Zeo taps her shoulder and asks why he's trying to hide from her. Since the police officer must be paying attention to Bai Wu's movements, he starts making a fuss and calling Zio a bouncer to get attention. Zio doesn't take this very well and plans to hit Bai Wu, but when he tries to dodge her, she opens the gangster's backpack and reveals all the petrol he was carrying, which makes the gangster furious. Bai Wu asks the police officer for help. Suddenly, the gangster is beaten by Zio until he is immobile and arrested because surprisingly, Zio was the undercover police. Zio realizes that those bottles were actually filled with petrol. Bai Wu was shocked to realize that she was the police officer. When everything was settled, Zio approaches Bai Wu to ask him if he was the one who reported the situation. He asks him to explain how he knew it would happen. Bai Wu tells him that if he reveals his secret, he must keep it a secret. Bai Wu knows he can't say nonsense, he can't fool Zio, he must get out of there fast. Zio won't let him leave, he asks him again how he knew. Zio asks him how he knew there was a gangster on the bus who would try to set it on fire. Bai Wu replies that it's just coincidence and that it's his job to maintain a harmonious society. Zio tells Bai Wu not to forget that he was not yet inside the bus when he called the police. Plus he knew exactly how many liters of petrol the gangster was carrying. Bai Wu replies that he just guessed. Zio thinks about taking him somewhere else for a chat and tea. Bai Wu realizes that this girl is trying to kidnap him. He thinks that this time something bad will happen. However, Mu was nearby because his car broke down and he sent it for repair. Mu asks Bai Wu what's going on. He comes up with an idea and winks at her. What he came up with was to act like Mu's boyfriend and he starts apologizing to her for cheating on her. He makes a big scene telling her that he has nothing to do with Zio. The people around were shocked to see all this, what gossips they are. Bai Wu accuses Zio of tormenting him, then turns to her and tells her that he loves his girlfriend Mu very much and asks her to stop bothering him. It looked like a scene of two girls fighting over a boy. Mu plays along with Bai Wu and asks Zio to stop bothering her boyfriend. Despite all this, Zio still didn't leave. On the contrary, she turns to look at Bai Wu and then punches him in the stomach and then leaves, but not before warning Mu that she should be careful with him, as he might not be a good person. Even though the punch hurt, she finally took care of the problem temporarily. Mu helped him because he helped her last time, so now they are even. But it doesn't stop there, because King was also there and thinks that Bai Wu is bothering Mu. The next day, Bai Wu goes in his new car thinking that if he keeps messing with those girls, he won't be able to do anything, so in the future he will avoid her, avoid the trouble and then make money in peace, all Bai Wu wants is money. Bai Wu goes to the antique place again, but when he arrives he finds Wang is not there, this guy tells Bai Wu that Wang said he went to buy some things in the countryside. That means Bai Wu can't buy treasures from him today, but it doesn't matter, he can still go shopping at other stalls, or so he thought, because the probability is 0%. In fact, there is a 100% chance that he can't get any treasures that day. Bai Wu wonders why the system is showing him something different from what it showed him the day before, but he doesn't care and will search anyway, not realizing that King is after him. A few minutes later, he comes across a genuine treasure in this gentleman's stall. The guy offers him 3,000 or if he wishes, a 5% discount. Bai Wu tells him that a 50% discount would be better and the man immediately accepts. Everything indicates that the man has no idea that this product is real. Bai Wu is about to buy it, how can the system fail? So King arrives to offer the guy the original price, 3000. The man accepts immediately, but Bai Wu tries to convince him to sell it to him. He offers him 10,000, but King raises the offer to 30,000. Now that he does that, the stall owner already knows that the object is quite expensive and it will not be easy for him to sell it. Bai Wu bids 50,000 and tells King that if she bids more than that, then the object will be hers, then King bids 100,000. Bai Wu is not able to fool her, she will keep raising the price. Bai Wu has no choice but to accept his defeat, King made an offer without looking. It is clear that he did it on purpose, but he is not stupid enough to keep increasing the pace and fight with her. The system also agrees but Bai Wu is upset about it. The stall owner hands the object to King. She quickly realizes that it looks like a genuine Ming Dynasty product, so she recognizes that Bai Wu is skilled. Later, she continues to follow Bai Wu to every stall he goes to, sabotaging his offerings. She is doing it on purpose, but no one can tell her that she can't do it. However, she tells Bai Wu that she can either increase the price of her bid or else choose a fake item, but she has plenty of money, so she doesn't care. King investigated everything about Bai Wu, including about the car he bought the day before. She tells him that it was all very sudden. Bai Wu tells her that it was just luck and that he made that money legally without committing any crime. She reminds him that last time he told her that he can calculate it. According to King's investigation, Bai Wu was a very ordinary person who didn't inherit anything from his family. She mentions that she doesn't know what dirty tricks he used and tells him that he won't be able to reach the top. 
King threatens Bai Wu and tells her that from now on, she will take it upon herself to cut her off. She warns her not to look for a way out as she won't be able to do anything. This girl is crazy. Bai Wu tries to pull herself together and tells him that even though he has raised the price over and over again and prevented her from making money, King's actions did not scare him at all. And she makes it clear that believe it or not, King will not be able to stop him from making money. She tells him that if he does, he should try, as she guarantees that she won't let him make a single penny. As long as Bai Wu buys something, King will come in to raise the price and take it from her. Bai Wu walks around many stalls without buying anything. She even goes over to whisper to this vendor. King is confused as Bai Wu is just talking to people and does not seem to be buying anything. Bai Wu asks the success rate and it is 100%. What she has been doing all this time is talking to all the vendors to buy everything in their shops. King thinks Bai Wu is underestimating her. When Bai Wu is about to close the deal, King intervenes to try to take all the items herself. Bai Wu asks her not to go that far, but she wants to buy everything he wants. She had told him before, she won't let him make a single penny. Bai Wu tries to reason with her and tells her that there are too many things to buy them all, then tells her that she only knows how to talk and wants to do that to scare him. King gets upset at feeling slighted and proceeds to buy everything in the shops at an extra 10%. King tells the salesman not to stand still and to start moving fast. The salesman asks King for an address to deliver everything to. King mocks Bai Wu because even though he is a fortune teller, he can still beat him, but he smiles because everything went according to his plan. What he agreed with the sellers was to split the money in half. Some sellers already transferred the money to him. King looked like a fool, so she gets annoyed with him. Bai Wu conspired against her. Wasn't she not supposed to let him earn a single penny today? Bai Wu is steps ahead of her. King gets angry and leaves. Bai Wu laughs at her and asks her to walk away slowly. Suddenly, she receives a system update and is completely shocked. Even though Bai Wu has just made a fortune, he's a little afraid of what King and his family might do. The system was upgraded, yes, but it doesn't seem to have changed anything at all. Will he be able to tell the difference when he uses it? That's something he'll see later. Right now, his skills and strength are more than enough, but he still has no contact with a powerful person. If he wants to make a lot of money he must expand his network. But the question is that, how can he do it? Moments later, this gentleman speaks to him, he is King's butler. Bai Wu asks him if he is there because King sent him to take care of him. But it is a misunderstanding. Because the butler tells him that King sent her to invite Bai Wu to a celebrity meeting as a way of apologizing for what he did. But it all sounds very strange, from what he knows of King. She is not that kind of person, but Bai Wu knows that if he goes there he has the chance to meet powerful and rich famous people. It is a great opportunity to expand his network, so he agrees to go. An hour later, Bai Wu goes to the meeting, King greets him and then introduces him to some people. He introduces him to young master Wang, the future successor of Xinghai Group, also to Zhu, owner of StarTech and also to Liu, CEO of Eve Media. They are all famous people, Bai Wu feels a bit nervous to meet them face to face. King laughs at him as he senses how Bai Wu looks embarrassed to be with famous people. It turns out that King wished to see him in that state and then take it as a joke. Bai Wu must control himself, for if he does not calm his nerves, he will be grieved to the end. He gets an idea, no matter how famous they are, they eat and drink too, so he imagines them going to the toilet to calm his nerves. Next, he introduces himself to them. King is surprised to see that suddenly, Bai Wu is no longer nervous. Five minutes later, as they sit down, King tells him that she is surprised that he could talk to these celebrities. Bai Wu confidently tells him that there is no difference between a celebrity and an ordinary person, but King assures him that he will soon know the differences between them. Moments later, this bald man opens the subject of the meeting, Charity Auction. King has a Ming Dynasty porcelain plate and would like to auction it off, and since Bai Wu is an antique expert, she hands it over to him, now it's up to him to estimate and bid. Just as he said, she did that for him, the auction can use his name. She tells Bai Wu that it is a great opportunity to get a good reputation in front of celebrities. It is something that will help him in the future. Bai Wu agrees, all the people there are famous, so if they can remember him, it will surely help him expand his reputation in the future. Bai Wu thinks he is dreaming, why on earth would King be nice to him? Well she claims to have decided not to be his enemy anymore. Bai Wu thinks she is very unreliable, maybe she is waiting for his guard to drop. The antique is a fake. Well, the second option is not, because it is a genuine product recently sold for 12 and a half million. Besides, the chances of the auction being a success are 100%, so if the product is real and the auction will be successful, there is nothing to worry about. Even if King tries to do something to him, he still has the system in his hands, so there is nothing to fear. Bai Wu agrees to participate in the auction. Next is the last lot of the charity auction. Bai Wu is about to make entrance. While King looks at him with this face, what's the matter with that woman? Judging by that, Bai Wu suspects that there must be something wrong. Bai Wu wants to see what kind of trick King pulled. 
Bai Wu introduces himself to everyone at the meeting, and when he is about to show the auction, he realizes that it is a roll of toilet paper. The people at the auction could not believe what they were seeing. How could anyone think of auctioning toilet paper? Bai Wu already smelled something. She knew it wouldn't be that easy. She wonders at what point King exchanged the items. It is clear that she had seen that the item was 100% real. At that instant she remembers that moments before, King dropped her earring. While he was picking it up, she exchanged the boxes. Her plan was quite elaborate. The bald man tells Bai Wu that if she has too much urgency to go to the bathroom, she should go. Meanwhile, King enjoyed watching. Bai Wu thinks, if he escapes, that would only make King look down on him even more and that will be even more embarrassing for the rest of his life. He must think of a way to save the situation. Those present told Bai Wu that if there was nothing to show, then he should leave, as there was no need to stand there and make a fool of himself. The bald man tells Bai Wu to get off the stage, but that is something Bai Wu cannot afford. He must hold on a little longer, as the success rate of the auction is 100%, there must be a way out. He is fully confident in his powers, but that is not the only thing, because he also has writing skills, which have not been in vain. Bai Wu tells everyone that the object looks just like a roll of toilet paper, but for him, it is the most precious gift. King's smile faded as he watched Bai Wu's performance. Meanwhile, he continued to tell the story, when he was young, he cried a lot and was laughed at. His parents gave him gifts, one of these gifts was a roll of toilet paper that his father gave him, which would be used to wipe his tears, soon after that, his parents died unexpectedly. His family is poor and all they have is a pile of debts and that roll of toilet paper. He remembers his father's words, he always reminded him not to cry, but the suffering of life can be known after suffering it, every time he can't hold back his urge to cry. He would like to tear a piece of that paper to wipe his tears. But then he tells himself that he should be strong and move on, so he took the roll of toilet paper and took it to the auction. Okay, it goes without saying that this whole story is a lie. Bai Wu presents the roll of toilet paper as a testimony of his struggle, and today at that important moment he is willing to auction his most important roll of toilet paper to contribute to charity. King is shocked in a bad way by what he is doing. But judging by the atmosphere of the place, Bai Wu's words had no effect, or so he thought. Because this guy considered that the story is very interesting and offers him a hundred mil for the roll of paper, and done deal, the auction ends, Bai Wu really made it, no wonder. He has the power to see the success rate and to be a trickster. Bai Wu managed to overcome King's evil intentions once again, she tells him that she was just lucky that time, but warns him that the next one won't be so easy. Although Bai Wu saved her reputation, her plan to meet celebrities seems to be over. Although Bai Wu is a very good liar and is able to make up stories, in most people's eyes, he was just a clown. King is also gone, and without her, no one would pay attention to him. Bai Wu must work hard to make money, as long as he has money, he will be able to have status and dignity, then Bai Wu realizes that the guy who bought him the toilet paper is with Mu. The system tells Bai Wu that both Mu and that guy have a business cooperation with each other and they are about to get married. Bai Wu wonders how the system suddenly became smart, maybe because of the upgrade. Bai Wu now understands why Mu treated King that way. He also adds that the world of the rich is complicated, and it's something he doesn't want to deal with anymore, getting money with a peaceful mind is quite serious. Bai Wu wants to get an assistant in the antique circle, after all it is the only circle he is familiar with, despite everything, he misses Wang a bit, he doesn't know if he has found treasures recently. The system tells him that there are treasures to be collected from Wang. Bai Wu finds it strange that Wang always has good items, but he is always the one who makes a fortune, then he thinks about the possibility of cooperating with him. After all he has a good way in the antique circle. It will be great for Bai Wu to have him as an assistant in the antique circle in the future, so that's what he will do. The next day, Bai Wu goes to see Wang. Wang tells him that he has nothing to sell him. Bai Wu tells him not to be angry, as he is only there to talk about possible cooperation. Since Wang is a lucky guy who always buys good items, and Bai Wu on the other hand can see the valuable things, if they work together, they will be the greatest partners. Bai Wu tries to convince him, they will sell things and the profit would be 50-50. Wang annoyed asks him why he would need to work with him, as he has been in that business for a long time and says he knows what he is doing. Wang doesn't trust much and thinks Bai Wu is there to make him lose face again, so he asks him to get the hell out of there. Bai Wu is now afraid that if he says two more words to him, Wang will get angrier at him, but he didn't come here to argue, so he thinks he'll back off for now, as he's sure he'll get another chance to talk to him and sooner or later they'll cooperate. As he is about to leave, he notices that a couple of guys went to see Wang, so he wonders if he is buying or selling something. What they brought him was the Seven Star Cao Cao Sword. Bai Wu wonders how could that be the Seven Star Sword, so he wonders if it's a real sword. To no one's surprise, it's not a genuine product. These two guys want to take advantage of Wang's naivety. Bai Wu thinks well, Wang is not able to see that the sword is fake. 
Those two have pretty high cheating skills, but they can't cheat by Wu. Next, he wonders what the fake point of that blade is. The system asks him if he is blind, but he is not joking. He really can't see it. The system shows him the sword up close, so he thinks the fake spot is the gem. But then he remembers that Wang is good at seeing artifacts. If the gems were fake, he would know from the start. Could it be that there is a fake spot under the gem? If he tells Wang that the object is fake, will he believe him? Bai Wu decides to intervene and tells them that the skills of those who created that one are the same as the original, they still don't seem to get it. Wang mentions that he has analyzed the knife and everything is fine. He also boasts that because he has been in the business for years, he knows what is real or fake, he mistakenly believes that Bai Wu wants to buy the knife and lashes out at him. Bai Wu tells him that if he proves that the knife is fake, Wang must agree to cooperate with him in the future. Wang does not agree to these terms, so Bai Wu asks for the price of the item, it is 500,000. Bai Wu tells him that if he is wrong about his suspicion, he will pay 10 times that, so Wang hands him the knife to quickly show him why he says the knife is fake. Bai Wu looks at his surroundings until he takes this object to hit the razor, leaving everyone with their mouths open. This makes the gem come off and Wang is furious, but Bai Wu knows what he is doing, because just below the gem, there was a QR code. This proof is irrefutable. Thus, Bai Wu asks him if he is now willing to collaborate with him. Wang confronts the guys who wanted to cheat him. He was about to beat them up but they quickly ran away. Wang asks Bai Wu how he knew the knife was fake. Now he thinks it was Bai Wu who hired those two people to trick him. Bai Wu tells him that if he was able to get an item on the level of the Seven Star Sword, he wouldn't be asking him to collaborate. Bai Wu asks him if he wants to know how he knew, but Wang doesn't want to hear it yet. They were about to agree to collaborate but not yet, because Wang thinks that if they collaborate Bai Wu can sell it in the future, so he tells him that he should get someone else to collaborate with. Wang has his reasons, he has been in that business for a long time. He has experienced many things, and if one thing is for sure there is that nobody is honest. So that's why he doesn't want to trust anyone. That's why he tells Bai Wu that it's better to forget about collaborating but he will let him take anything as a reward for helping him. Bai Wu asks what kind of things these are. Wang shows him a robe that Master Xuanzang left behind when he was learning writing. Bai Wu asks him where he stole it from, as it still has cigarette butt holes in it, then shows him a sea bowl, which looks more like an ordinary bowl from a restaurant. He will now offer her his special object. Bai Wu wonders why everything he is showing her is worthless, as the system had said earlier that he could get valuable items from Wang. Bai Wu is surprised with the next item, so he asks him where he stole it from. It was the male and female duo sword, used by Liu Bei and Liu Xuan of the Three Kingdoms. Yeah I don't know who those people are either, let's pretend they are important. Bai Wu uses the system to analyze the sword. It turns out to be a 100% genuine item, which surprises him even more. However, Wang tells him that he can't give him that item because of its high value. Bai Wu must think of a way to get the sword. Bai Wu tries to make him believe that the sword, like the Seven Star Sword, is a fake. Wang tells him to look at it closely, the details on it, it couldn't be a fake. Bai Wu mentions that he said the same thing about the Seven Star Sword, then approaches Wang and tells him that the sword probably has a QR code on it as well. Wang is saddened, as he is sure that the sword is real but still Bai Wu insists it is not, but he ends up falling for his game and plans to break the sword. But Bai Wu stops him and tells him that he wants that sword. Wang had told him to take whatever he wants for helping him before, so if he takes that sword he doesn't care, since Bai Wu made him believe it's fake. Bai Wu thanks him for the sword but thinks how miserable Wang looks, so now he must get the chance to get a big win for him, or else he will feel bad. But for now he must go to meet that old man to be his friend, because he is the oldest in the antique circle, and that celebrity gathering that time was not enough. Now that he has that sword, he can give it to Qi, so he goes to see him, hoping not to meet Xiao again. Bai Wu enters the place and asks for Mr. Chi. This lady tells him that he is busy, so he has no time to receive visitors. Bai Wu wonders if Mr. Chi were there he would meet him. The answer is yes. So Bai Wu tells the lady to tell Mr. Chi that the person who sold him the Tang Sankai has come again. Then he hears a familiar voice. It was Zio, who also already knew that he was the one who sold the Tang Sankai to his grandfather. Zio wants to teach Bai Wu a lesson now, then he receives a warning from the system. That fight would cause him 100% injury. Zio prepares to attack, but Bai Wu manages to dodge her. Zio picks up a vase and is about to throw it at Bai Wu, but Mr. Chi appears and scolds her for making a fuss again. Chi sends Zio back home and tells her to consider her mistakes. She leaves, but threatens Bai Wu. Bai Wu thinks she finally escaped, but deep down she knows Zio won't leave things like this. Chi tells Bai Wu not to listen to Zio. He clarifies that she's actually a good girl, just not very smart. Bai Wu can tell from Chi's expression that there is something on her mind. 
but the system only analyzes the success rate and does not yet have a mind reading function. That means the system needs more updates to get news. Chi asks Bai Wu to join him for a chat over tea. Bai Wu notices that Chi's tea room is really extraordinary. Chi cuts to the chase and asks Bai Wu if Bai Wu came with a treasure. Bai Wu shows him the sword. Chi recognizes it immediately, the treasure of the Eastern Han Dynasty. Bai Wu tells Chi that ordinary things are not worthy of him, so only a thing as good as a sword is worthy of Chi. Chi mentions that such duo swords in the Eastern Han Dynasty are now auctioned for about 5 million. Bai Wu tells him that that sword was used by Liu Bei. Chen mentions that in that case, it is enough to increase the price tenfold. Bai Wu thinks that sword is worthy of Qi, something like the younger generation gives him that sword to express their admiration. Qi tells him that if he sells that sword to some foreigner the price would go sky high, but Bai Wu tells him that he must be the one to have that treasure, and he will not sell it at a higher price. Given Qi's reaction, Bai Wu thinks it is possible that he is not satisfied with the sword, or maybe he is not satisfied with him. The satisfaction rate with the sword is 100%, while with Bai Wu it is 10%. Chi thinks that the gift is too much for him, so he doesn't think the old man will accept it. Plus the old man makes friends based more on personality and skill than on the weight of a gift. Bai Wu knows that was a rejection of nudity. He thinks Chi thinks he's not qualified to be his friend. Not 100% qualified. Chi tells him that if he gets anything else in the future, he can take it and he won't treat him badly. Bai Kui gave him a sword with the intention of establishing a relationship with him, but ended up being rejected because he is not qualified. He thinks old Chi is interesting. All indications are that if you don't have any real skills, you can't be friends with him. Bai Wu gets going. He reminds Chi that a few moments ago he said that if those swords were used by Liu Bei they would be worth 50 million. Chi asks him if he is sure that sword was used by Liu Bei. Bai Wu nods and tells Chi that he must be wondering how he knows that. Bai Wu tells him that although he is an ordinary person, he managed to learn something. Divinatory Calculation Chi asks him if he really knows how to do that. Bai Wu says yes, and not just with antiques, but with other things as well. For example, just then Zio is outside the window trying to listen in on the conversation they're having. Bai Wu is counting on Zio to take down his grandfather. Zio was indeed behind the window trying to listen, and grandfather confirms it by going out to see. Fortunately for Bai Wu, he just used the system to find out Zio's location. Bai Wu laughs a little at her, then she runs away before hearing what her grandfather had to say. Next, Bai Wu asks Chi if he believes her now. But no, he still doesn't believe him, as he could only have heard the movement outside and guessed that it was Zio, not enough to convince Chi. Bai Wu recognizes that it is difficult to deal with old Chi, so he asks him how he could believe him. If Bai Wu doesn't get a way to convince him soon, he won't have a chance to cooperate with him again in the future. Bai Wu asks about the probability of persuading him. It is quite high, so he wonders what he is supposed to do. There he comes up with the details of the antiques that are in the room. This has a 100% chance of success. Bai Wu puts his plan into action and tells Chi that there are 26 antiques in total. Chi tells him that they are in plain sight and that it is something that is not necessary to guess, but Bai Wu asks him to listen carefully. Bai Wu activates the system to see in detail every antique in the room. He starts with a set of sandalwood utensils, which is supposed to cost about 20 million. He's right, but it's still not enough to convince Qi. He continues with that black jade platform from the Ming Dynasty Revolution, which is valued at 6 million. That black jade ink stone should have been used by Zhan Zhizheng, the chief cabinet assistant of the Wanli Dynasty, and the Ming Dynasty. Qi is surprised and asks Bai Wu how he knows this, as it took them two years to find out after consulting and researching endless historical books. Bai Wu tells him that it's all worked out, but he's not finished yet, and asks Qi to sit down and listen patiently. He continues now with a toilet brush holder, an object from the fourth study of the Jia King Emperor of the Qing Dynasty. While the toilet brush is an object from the period of the Republic of China, Bai Wu continues to tell him about the objects. From this bronze jug, to that porcelain in white with blue. After a while, Bai Wu finishes with the origins of the 26 antiques present in the place, so he asks Qi again if he doubts his skills. Qi admits that he already believes him, but if he hadn't seen it with his own eyes he wouldn't believe him. Bai Wu reminds him that he told him that the sword from before was used by Liu Bei. Qi admires Bai Wu's clever calculation. She did a textual research on the heritage and provenance of things in that house, but he is not able to prove that the sword was used by Liu Bei, so he finds it mysterious and risky to say that it had been used by Liu Bei without a solid basis. She still doesn't believe him, well, he does, but he still goes against him. Is it because he has something to tell him? Or maybe he wants Bai Wu to help him in some way. And so it is, 100%. She is impressive. He was defeated by Bai Wu but now he uses tricks. He really deserves to be the Grand Elder of the Antique Circle. Bai Wu was watching Qi for a while and he looked like he had something on his mind. 
Bai Wu uses his powers to realize that what makes Qi sad is related to antiques. What Qi wants is for Bai Wu to verify the authenticity of an object. That's why he goes ahead of him and tells him that if he has something he wants him to identify, he can do so with no problem. Showing his powers once again, old Qi is impressed. Qi has no choice but to say it directly now that Bai Wu has found out. He has indeed been upset about an antique recently, and he wants Bai Wu to help him check the veracity of that antique. Bai Wu thinks that if he helps him solve his problems, it would be a great opportunity for them to get closer, so he agrees and tells him that he will do his best to help him. Bai Wu accompanies Qi to a large basement. This basement is used to have treasures that need to be taken care of. Qi mentions that some time ago, he got a blue and white nine dragon jar made with wonderful skills and ingenuity. It is clear to Bai Wu that Qi is worthy of belonging to the top of the antique circle, unlike Wang with whom he has petty quarrels. Qi opens the basement vault. Regarding the object, Qi always felt an inexplicable emptiness. He always thought something was wrong, so the deal is still not done, so if Bai Wu can identify that treasure, Qi will officially buy it, and no matter what the result is, Qi plans to give him a profit of 10 million. What Qi said makes it seem like Bai Wu is only in it for the money, even the system knows that, but Bai Wu's ambition is higher than that. The object is behind that other vault. As they enter, they finally arrive. Bai Wu is surprised as the object is something extraordinary at first sight. That was the so-called Nine Dragon Jar and its price is 1.3 billion. Bai Wu is impressed with the price and tells Qi that he will do his best, for that he must observe it first. Bai Wu notices that the system is nowhere to be found. That's when he notifies him that the system is only responsible for analyzing its own questions. So he asks the system directly if that was the real Nine Dragon Jar or not, 100% fake. To prove it, the system analyzes it carefully. After the results, it thinks about the percentage it gave it. But after all, that's an object valued at 1.3 billion. Even if it knows it's a fake, in case it breaks the 4% probability, what if the evidence is ruined? If he can't prove the fake, it's all over, so he asks the system if a normal person would be able to identify that vase as a fake. The probability of this is very low. It is almost impossible for a normal person to identify it. Even Mr. Chi could not, it is too risky to break it. Bai Wu knows that if he is not careful, he will dig his own grave. But if he does not break it, his tricks will not be shown and old Chi will not believe him anymore. Next, Bai Wu reveals to Chi that the vase is a fake. Chi asks for evidence to prove his claim. Bai Wu tells him that the evidence is on the bottom of the vase. After looking at the bottom of the vase, Qi still sees nothing wrong. But what happens is that the evidence is inside the bottom of the vase. That's when Qi realizes that Bai Wu plans to break the vase, but only that method can prove that the vase is fake, Qi thinks about it. However, as the deal is not yet official, the ownership of that vase is not in Qi's hands. It is very important to break the vase, and if Bai Wu really wants to do it, then Qi will inform Mr. Zhang about it. Honestly, Bai Wu is also afraid of breaking the vase, but he must take the risk, so he tells him to contact the owner of the vase to confront him face to face. Moments later, Jiang appears and asks Qi why he called him. Bai Wu will deal with Jiang to see his intentions. The first thing he tells him is that he looks like someone who sells fake antiques. Jiang gets angry after hearing this. Bai Wu cuts to the chase. He tells Jiang that that vase over there is fake. Jiang tries to excuse himself by saying that several antique experts have said it is real, so he tells Bai Wu to show him what's wrong with the vase. Bai Wu knows that this person is very confident of his fraud. The probability of failing to identify is very high. It seems that such fraudulent technology is quite unusual. Bai Wu tells him that to find out if it is real or not, he must break it. Immediately Zhang intervenes and plans to cancel the deal. This gives Bai Wu more reason to tell him that the vase is fake. Bai Wu knows this guy is selling fake items, the violent way he's acting is proof of them. But he doesn't care what he's talking about either, so he immediately smashes the vase, leaving them both stunned. Jiang berates Qi for not telling Bai Wu about what he has done. But Qi knows what he will do to Bai Wu if he fails to find evidence. Bai Wu knows that if he messes up, the money is secondary, the relationship with Qi is more valuable. Qi makes it clear that if Bai Wu shows there is a problem with the vase, then he will talk to Jiang alone. Bai Wu thinks that he mustn't make Qi angry. Bai Wu searches through the debris of the vase for the flaw, the system identifies it. Bai Wu thinks about whether he should hit the flaw with that hammer, since it is porcelain. It is impossible to know where to hit correctly. The system warns him that with the strength of that hammer, the probability of destroying the flaw is 58%, it is too risky. Doing it that way, the probability of destroying it is 13%, it is a sure way to smash it to pieces. Bai Wu must hurry, the clock is ticking and if he fails the old man will never believe him again. Jiang tells Qi that the object was real, he says he let Bai Wu break the vase just out of respect for Qi, but he makes it clear that many companies wanted to buy that vase, and now it is destroyed. 
Just wait, you first class scammer. Chi agrees to give a lot of money to Jang if Bai Wu fails. Bai Wu continues to search. If that thing fails to come out, how would he explain to Chi? In desperation, he hits the remains of the vase until he suddenly breaks the failure. It's over. He used too much force. It's very likely that the evidence is broken, or so he thought, because to his luck, there was still a small piece left, so he takes it and shows it to both of them. It was a QR code. Chi immediately asks for an explanation from Zhang, who is taken away moments later. Bai Wu managed to survive, then thinks that Wang's broken knife also had a QR code on it, so maybe these objects came from the same place. Chi thanks Bai Wu for his hard work. As a reward, Chi gives him his business letter and tells Bai Wu to call him whenever he needs him in the future, as from now on they will be like family. It is an honor for Bai Wu to receive this from Chi, he finally has the support of a big shot. Bai Wu got 50 million for the swords, and the fee for fortune telling services was 10 million. Besides, he made friends with old Chi and broke an overpriced fake base. The next step is to help Wang with his business. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.